Yo, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy, y'all. Shady Great, back again with another video. Yo, we got another playbook for you guys. It's been a while since the last playbook video, so I figured I'd drop something fresh and new to take advantage of some of the newer cards that we've gotten in my team, but also give you guys in play now some new plays to go forward with in your games. I've tested these plays over the last couple weeks, and they are definitely fire. Head over to the auction house. You want to pick up this Houston Rockets current playbook. It is currently not going for very much in the auction house, but this is definitely a fire playbook that you want to get a hold of because what we're going to be going over is different ways to utilize the pick and roll, pick and fade with different types of sets, which is going to provide nice spacing and driving lanes, enabling you to get to the basket, create mismatches, get some open shots. Let's take a quick look at my team. Um, before we do that, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We just reached 3,000 subs. I appreciate you guys. I picked up some new cards this past couple weeks. I've been sniping for a while. I did pay a ton for that Ben Simmons, but I'll probably be trying to snipe him this week. We're going to be featuring him in some of these plays, but these are just going to be ways to utilize him and other players that you may like using now. And I'm enjoying this Taco Fall card. He is a huge center down low, being able to dump it into him inside on these pick and roll looks but if you don't have somebody like taco fall that's cool too you can use anthony davis if you have token um deandre jordan he's going to be good just as well with that lob city finisher you don't have to have cards that cost a ton of mt alonzo morning was also free from the spotlight challenges um, but i have a ton of different players that i use with these i just want you to know that you can also use budget type cards with this kind of offense Definitely have some centers and power forwards out there that can hit the jump shots from deep and you want somebody that is lethal from shooting and has some good dribble moves. Um, I use Zach Levine, but Jalen Brown is not bad as well. He goes for pretty cheap in the auction house. And you also have other cards like Spotlight Clyde Drexler that you can use and he was also a free card. So take advantage of those if you're not looking to spend MT in the auction house. There are free cards that you can use with this playbook and in play now. As you know, the more realistic the game is, the easier these plays are going to work because you're not going up against souped up teams. But all right, let's take a quick second to go over what we're going to be covering in the video. So we're going to be going over what plays to select and why. Then we're going to go through a full play run through of each play. We're going to slow the play down on replay and cover the key points of the play and what to look for against CPU and user opponents. Then we're going to add a more comp style or comp feel to the play. And comp means like competitive when you're playing against some of the top people or people that just run five out and stuff. What can you do in your offense to make these plays more dynamic and more effective using, you know, different dribble moves and stuff. And then we're going to do some My Team Unlimited gameplay after each play. So after each CPU play, we'll show you how it works against users for most of the plays that we're going to be going through. I think we have like six or seven plays to go through. But let's get ready to get right into it. We're going to play a domination game against the all-time Lakers to go through each play. And I'll be walking through each step. Let's get into it. All right, so we're in our coaching settings, going to pick our play selection. And make sure you guys go ahead and select quick veer fist. Fist too high. Punch 35 fist. Fist four spread. Fist four corner high, which is similar to fist four spread. One just uses the center for a pick and roll and one uses the power four for a pick and fade. And we'll talk about that at the end. And then fist five quick, fist two flare, and then ISO five out. We're not gonna really go over, but it's good to have. There's a couple plays in this playbook that have the same spread and they call the screen for you. As you can see right there, a fist five side high. But I like having myself call the screen so I can call fade or roll myself. So having ISO 5 out puts your players in the same position as these plays, but you can call the screen for yourself. So we're not going to go over it. Just explain it right there how to use it. You call that pick and roll or pick and fade with the center, and then you have a 5 out with either a pick and roll or pick and fade. But we're going to be getting into the other plays, starting with quick veer fist. Let's jump right into it and start the first play. All right, one tip, coming up the court, quick veer fist. As you can see, we got a nice spread in our offense. We get our little screen, little rub screen right there. Taco runs away, and then we hit a nice shot with Levine. But on the replay breakdown, 
The magic of this play happens, as you can see, we have Levine and then we have Butler in the far corners, which gives us great spacing. We have Lamar Odom out on the wing. We get a little screen from Taco Fall, but what happens is right after the screen, he doesn't roll like he normally would, like a regular screen and roll. He's going to fade hard to the left, which is going to, against a user, they're going to have to follow, which is going to leave you open for a drive. If they don't follow, he's going to set a screen for Levine down in the corner, which is going to pop him out for an open shot. So if the CPU or user follows Taco Fall, you're probably going to get to the basket if that screen worked, the ball screen. But if they switch to their center and they try to stay with you on the drive, Taco Fall is going to be open for the drive or Zach Levine popping out, they're not going to be able to switch. So he's going to get an open three because there was nobody there to cover him. So right here, they stopped me. In this moment, if you have a shooting center in the game, that fade is going to be deadly. You can pass it to him there and he will stop. He won't go for the screen. So that could be a shot. So depending on what your opponent is doing, you may want to move a shooting center there. So let's go over a little comp style and how you can put this in a little bit better way to beat those guys that like to double team or that like to run five out and you're playing a heated competitive game. So now I have Zach Levine in the game and I'm going to use the momentum behind the back to get by. And now we got Chris Bosch instead of Taco Fall so I can hit that three. And let's look at it again. So as we approach the play circle, I hit L2 so I can shuffle my feet. Then I go behind the back, which gives me momentum around that screen. I'm threatening the lane for a dunk. They have to help over. Now we have proper spacing and Chris Bosch open for a three. And that's going to be deadly all game just because of the combination of how that play works. All right, now let's see how this works against different users with different types of defenders and teams. So we're running the same play, quick veer fist. As you can see, he follows me to try to block Ben Simmons, which opens Kobe up because Taco Fall has a clear screen. They can't switch it because there's nobody else. It's a two-on-one screen. One of them is going to be open for a basket right there. And Kobe pops open off of the nice brick wall screen from Taco. Again, they stay with me. This time I get it out to Stockton on the kick out because the nice screen from Taco Fall with that misdirection. One more time, we come up the court. I'm going hard left. As, look how wide open. If Chris Bosch was on the right where Taco was, I would have had an open shot with him, but I get it over to, to Butler in the corner because that defender helps. And last time running through, this time I go hard again, left off the screen. They help again, and now Zach Levine pops out for a three. So you can see how effective it is for that three-point shot but you can also get inside with it. All right, cool, let's move on to the second play, fist too high. This is another great play for comp and user games. You can shoot a very high percentage using this one. We get Lamar Odom open for an open three off of that double screen. It's kind of like fist 92 side from the um, 2013 Heat playbook. But you start off, you see we got that nice spacing, Butler's in the corner, Levine is on the wing. We get a double screen from Lamar Odom and Taco. Lamar is going to fade and then Taco is going to dive. So if they switch that screen somehow or if somebody's trailing, somebody's going to be open. Right now, Lamar pops open on the wing. So we kick it out to him for an open shot because Magic Johnson was trailing the play. At any time they switch and then I get Shaq on Stockton and Magic on Taco, then that's going to be a great time to pull it out, post up and take advantage of the mismatch. So this play, anytime somebody helps, somebody is going to be open because of the good spacing you have off of that double screen. So right here, they help off, leave Kobe wide open for an open shot. That's not something you want to do because he's definitely going to green that at a high percentage. Kobe shot is fuego in this game right now. Come up to court, recall it again, and now we're going to get a little bit more active with it. We're going to go with that behind the back again for that comp game style. As you see, we get a wide open shot because of what the spacing does. Magic gets caught up in that screen. We go momentum behind the back. We take a couple dribbles. You guys know you've seen this online. You go up against people that do it all the time. I don't do it as much, but I can. Now we're wide open for a shot. If anybody helps, someone is going to be open. Tackled, I mean, uh, Duncan dive into the basket, Bosch on the outside, and then we have my, our two wings ready to shoot. And you cannot leave Stephen Curry that open doesn't matter how far he is. All right, now we got Zach Levine running it. Same thing, hit that behind the back. You get some space inside. Could have kicked it in the taco, but we saw the switch and mismatch, and now we get it inside of him for an easy layup. This time, John Stockton comes up, step back, and right now we're playing against a user opponent. As you can see, 
we're still able to get those easy baskets and continue to shoot at a high percentage while staying unpredictable in our offense. All right, moving on to play number three is punch 35 fist. It's another pick and roll play, but it's just a different dynamic. Now we're coming off a horn screen, which I'll explain what horns is at, you know, when we get in the replay. And then we get at the end of the play, it's a post up for taco or your big, if you get that far in the play. I don't usually get that far in the play. If I do, I'll do it if there's a switch there. But you see, we have the horns. That means we have them at the extended elbows. We have Taco and Bosch. Then in the corners, we have Kobe. Paul George is supposed to be in the left corner, but he's being defended right now, so he didn't get to a spot. Immediately right after, you're going around the center from your screen along the right side. He's diving to the basket, and then your power forward is relocating to the top of the key. That relocation is very important for rotation. If they try to help on that alley-oop or that roll inside, your power forward on the outside is going to be wide open. You get it around if you go to the end of the play. But obviously, you want to be attacking the basket off of the screen and roll and not really getting it inside for that post up unless there's a mismatch. All right. So you're going to come up. We're going to actually run it and try to get some quick points off of it. So you want to go hard off of that screen and hit the crossover. You get the nice screen. They don't help in time. Ben Simmons gets an easy dunk because of the momentum off of that crossover. So we get the crossover. Taco sets a nice screen. Shaq has to now choose between me and him. I could have thrown it up. I didn't go inside for an easy dunk, make the defense choose what their poison is, and you're going to have a good, successful offensive possession every time. All right, now I'm sure you guys know this, but the defense is going to play you different whether you have a shooter on um, controlling the ball or, or if they're going to just drive. So right now, Lamar Odom can shoot the ball, so the defense is going to play it different. And I'll explain right here. Since he can hit this shot, Shaq has to step out and switch because I could have shot that. That's why I take a little hesitation. Once Shaq switches off of this hesitation, since he doesn't want me to hit this three, now Taco has the ability for an alley-oop because he will have a switch. That's when you want to throw the alley-oop. When I had Ben Simmons in the game, they're not going to switch it because Ben is not going to take that shot. Especially if you're playing against somebody that plays with their defense on auto, their computer or their CPU is not going to switch. But if they have it on switch, you want to be aware. So right there again, now they rotate for the alley-oop and we get the kick out to Bosch like we spoke about earlier. If they rotate onto that alley-oop, we're going to be open on the top of the key with our power forward. So you really just have to understand what the defense is doing and take what they're giving you. But there's always going to be something there if you play it smart, even if it's just a switch and a post up. All right, let's jump into the next one. We got fist four spread. This is one of my favorites. I mean, the whole playbook is fire, but this one is definitely something I run um, often because of the spacing that it provides. And we get a sideline screen now. So now instead of having the center of the basket available to us, we have the entire baseline and sideline, which is what you know you, they don't want to give up. As you can see, the spacing on the right side, we have all three of our guards over on the right side for kick out shots, or it's actually power forward, small forward, and shooting guard. We get the screen towards the sideline from Taco, and then he's rolling to the basket, creating a situation where you have a two-on-one. If the center doesn't step up, you go ahead and dunk it. If the center does step up to you, you can kick it over for an alley-oop. If you have somebody that's going to shoot that rock, you can also shoot it if the screen hits him well. So right here, we have Lamar Odom again. We're going to hit the behind the back, take the little hesitation, and make them have to play that shot, and we draw the foul. So off the behind the back, I always hit this hesitation to make them know they have to step out because I will shoot that. If they don't step out, I'm going to shoot. If they do step out, I'm going straight to the basket or looking for that alley -oop. All right, let's run it again. And don't forget the importance of hitting a move behind the back or a crossover or something to give you some momentum coming off of the screen. So we hit the behind the back. We get the space we need. As you know, we're going to hesitate. We get the space and we're able to green a shot because the defense wasn't able to recover in time. This time we're gonna run it with Stockton, see if we can get anything going. Come up the same thing, wanna get momentum off of that, hit the behind the back. They help over. Now we have a switch over from tackle. We're gonna make them have to double team. If they don't double team, we're getting an easy jam inside. Again, this is against a user opponent and unlimited. So we have to make them choose how they want us to beat them. Again, we hit the behind the back, hesitate, get them to stop and come out to us. We get them to help over. Now we have Jordan outside open for three. And sometimes you're gonna play against people that switch these screens, which is fine as well. You still you still wanna go hard off of the screen. If they switch it, boom, now Taco's gonna be open inside or whoever your center is may be open inside if they don't rotate. If they rotate, you got a three on the other side. 
Okay, the next play we're going over is called Fist 4, Corner High. It's the same concept as the last play we went over, but a key difference. Your center is now off the ball in the corner and your power forward is screen and fading, which creates different spacing. You're not getting a screen and roll this time, you're getting a screen and fade. This is why it's important to have both of these in there for different looks. It looks the same and you can have the same two people running it. I can have Bosch and Duncan in right now running this. So we get our screen and Odom fades Curry gets inside and Kobe's man helps over and now we're wide open. Obviously, I'm not going to have Taco Fall standing in the corner against a user running this play. I'm going to have somebody that can shoot that shot. So right here, we have Bosch over in the corner and Odom is our power forward. So they have to help. They help over. Kobe once again is wide open. So again, this one is the screen and fade. The last one was the screen and roll. All right, moving on to our next play. It's called Fist 5 Quick. We're not going to go over too much of it because I know you guys have seen a play similar to this before. It's very similar to Quick Four Horns Flare. Very nice play to get you an open shot outside or get you a drive inside to the basket. So you're starting off, you get a screen from your small forward on the right side. Right after that screen, while you're going to the basket, he gets screened for and now they're screening. Little flare towards the corner or towards the wing and now they're open for a shot unless somebody switches over and tries to steal that pass which can happen against a user. When they do that, just make sure you're looking to pass it to the either the center or you're looking to take that layup and not fall into the bait to get that pass stolen. Right here, once again, we get an open three, buckets, Jimmy buckets. You can also make sure your point guard or whoever's bringing the ball up is a shooting threat off of this by getting some momentum and now you get good space and to hit a shot if they're not able to recover in time to give you some more options rather than just driving. All right, last play we're going over is called Fist to Flare. It's also a screen and roll play, obviously, but it has some nice misdirection in it. So you get that screen at the center of the key, trying to get inside, couldn't get it into Taco, but on the left side, right after that screen, you can see Jimmy Butler is going to be setting a backdoor screen for Michael Jordan. So if we can't get the roll or if we can't get a drive and they help on the drive, now we have a backdoor screen and our shooter can get open because of the lack of defense over there because they were paying attention to Ben Simmons on the drive. So that's a perfect way to make them choose. If they stop the um, backdoor screen, Ben Simmons is gonna be open for the drive or taco fall be open for the roll. If they don't stop it, then you're gonna be open for that uh, pass outside. Right there, we get a nice alley-oop into taco. Since the defense was accounting for Simmons and took away that shot outside, we had him open. And now we get around the screen. They don't stop the drive in time, and Lamar Odom throws down a nasty dunk on Will Chamberlain. Nice facial right there. Again, coming up the court, fist to flare. We're going to get some nice momentum so we can get around the screen properly. We get around. This time we have Ben Simmons making the backdoor cut, so we're going to directional pass him inside because he's not a shooter, so we want to give him a chance to get in there. So that's another way to use this play while he's on the court. You don't always have to go to a shooter. You can push them inside for a nice basket. Here again, we're going up against a user this time. He's trying to choose who he wants to defend and he leaves Kobe open because he was paying attention to Simmons on the drive. This is keeping our offense efficient, making it easy to score points, which makes it much easier to play defense. I'm hoping you guys enjoyed this video. That's the end of the plays of the day. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on the video. Hit me up in the comments. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.